Hello everyone, my name is Florian and I'm a software engineer at Heavy Robotics. At the moment we are preparing for a webinar on a, one of our JavaFX-based visualization tools and I figured this would be a good time to also do a sort of demo showcase for the JavaFX community and people are interested. So for people who have never heard of us, Heavy Robotics creates modular robotic building blocks that allow you to build custom robots very quickly. Most of our customers are on the research side, so either in academia or industrial research groups. And uh, we also have customers that come to us with specific, usually very niche problems uh, where they need custom solutions for, and we can often help them with that. We've built robots of all sort of shapes and forms from balancing robots, wheeled robots, legged robots with different types of arms uh, in different combinations for indoor and outdoor environments. Uh, for example, Treddy would be one of the more outdoor robots. Um, it, it was built to be able to traverse different types of terrains, go into forests, uh, be submersed in water, and do various things. We also do a lot of work in non-destructive testing, so marrying robot position data with um, in different kinds of inspection data like ultrasonics uh, to create a 2D or 3D map of uh, some asset. All of the software that I'm going to talk today um, is available on our documentation page docs.heavy.us and you can download scope here and play around with it uh, a bit if you feel like. So if you start scope it shows you uh, the modules that are currently on the network uh, which in my case is one arm and two actors on a desk. Scope in general is meant to be run in conjunction with an API. So you would have some control computer that is running some real-time control and making the robot do something useful. And then in scope, like you have this parallel connection um, to the devices and you can see what is happening, whether your algorithm is behaving in the right way, um, similar to what you would normally use a scope in, for example, like the electrical world. In the dashboard, I get a lot of uh, extra information like firmware version, serial, and so on. Um, and I can get a, I get a stream viewer so I can see this camera. Uh, on my desk, I have an X-series actuator. This is more for indoor environments, a standard networking cable, uh, easy to connect to, but not sealed. Um, this would be a sealed actuator. It all uses all fiber optics um, and an I.O. board, which we use for interacting with uh, like external type sensors, um, you know, digital, like analog inputs, uh, digital outputs, and so on. Okay, so in monitoring, um, I can see various types of common plots. Every actuator returns about 40 to 50 um, different types of sensor measurements. Uh, everything from timestamps, IMU data, position, velocity, torque, different kinds of internal um, debugging information. Um, and yeah, so here you can see the most common ones. Um, if you need to access anything that uh, is not on here. There's actually a way to define XML plots where you can have your own equation. So you can have some math in there as well. Uh, and you can combine different types of feedback and, and create a custom plot in here. There are examples in the documentation, like this is not something I want to get into now. So I can look at the position here with the error on the bottom and see how it's wrecked into different position inputs. This is more of a debugging functionality to make sure that the robot does in fact uh, respond to position inputs and you know this is so that you can find bugs in like the API. Like if you're commanding something wrong but the actor is doing something correctly then it's easy to find where the problem is. Um, here like I have an example using the, the MATLAB API so I can create a, a step input on here show the live visualization, and then also do some gain tuning. So for example, I can go much lower or much higher, much stiffer. Eventually, if I go too high, it will be unstable, um, overheat, and so on. I, I don't really want to get into like how PD loops work. We also 
have an extended common filter on board that fuses the accelerometer and gyro data. And then we use the, um, the Scene3D API to um, no, visualize orientation feedback in real time. We also have a mobile application. So this would be the, the iOS version. We have this for iOS and Android, um, and it serves as a sort of a cross-platform joystick um, that interfaces directly with the APIs. So I can see what's happening there. And it gives us access to all the different phone sensors. AR Core and AR Kit, like depending on whether you're working with Apple or Google, um, has a way to combine IMU data with camera data and provide a full sixth off um, pose in space. So we can move it around, wait, wait until it finds a few features, and we now can move it around and see how it's moving. This is all done with uh, the just scene3D API. Next, uh, we can take an, like multiple different joints and combine them in uh, with a kinematic model and then visualize uh, what the entire robot looks like. And I have my visualization of the arm. So if I move around one actuator, I can visualize the entire kinematic model. So we can actually combine uh, all these different things. So we can use the um, um, AR kit data uh, and then feed the transform directly into the um, end effector uh, kinematics, like using inverse kinematics. So now this would be rotation only. Move this a bit out of the way. And I can enable translation as well. And now control the robot with just using using the phone and moving it around. Stopping here. So if I don't actually have the modules, um, or if I want to just run some code uh, with, you know, for for testing. Um, there is another feature called imitation devices. So I can launch this and then I can say, create a pexapod, for example, and then I have these dummy modules. It's not quite a simulation, uh, but you can see it for all the APIs. It, they behave the same as normal modules. Uh, you just don't get uh, IMU feedback and uh, the feedback is just what is being commanded. So and then I can take these, um, combine them with the kinematic model and set some positions. Like obviously this wouldn't work on a real robot, but we can use this and then run our hexapod demo. and like make it go up and down. Uh, there are a few extra visualization features like um, I can offset the base uh, so that nothing, nothing is ever um, below the ground, which makes it a little bit more or easier to look at, um, move around. Uh, if you do have real modules, like you can also have the um, orientation feedback included so that it's automatically oriented based on uh, the IMU data. Yeah, and then you can test robots like this. Lastly, we don't just work with offline data. So we can actually also work with uh, log files, so offline data. And here would be a log file um, that I took of a teach repeat demo app. Um, so we can marry the data again with a kinematic model. And 
look at what the robot was doing at that particular point in time. And see for see if we find anything interesting. So in this case, for example, we had a very large error here. So we can look at uh, what the position of each joint was. Um, we can have a command overlay of what should have happened and what what it did actually happen. I can also look at it from different angles simultaneously, so maybe one from the back, and go through the entire log file. This covers the most important features. Feel free to play around with it, and you know, let me know if you have any questions.